The United States Department of Transportation rules in regards to the handling and transportation of hazardous materials require all personnel to meet minimum training requirements. In recent years, DOT has developed general criteria for the training of not just drivers, but also warehouse, office, and other personnel involved in the movement of hazardous materials. This latest training video by Midwest Truckers Association helps to provide the comprehensive training. The Hazardous Materials Training Kit includes this training tape, the Security Awareness CD-ROM, the latest Emergency Response Guidebook, the Pocket Guide to Hazardous Materials, placards and label charts, training logs and certificates, and all materials necessary to complete training for employees. If you should need additional materials, please use the order form included in this kit or call Midwest Truckers Association at 217-525-0310. Hello and welcome to General Awareness Training. The Federal Hazardous Materials Transportation Law requires that any employee who affects the transportation of hazardous materials receive specific training in at least five areas. Those areas are General Awareness Training, Lesson 1, Safety Training, Lesson 2, Function Specific Training, Lesson 3, Driver Training, Lesson 4, and Security Awareness, Lesson 5, on the DOT CD-ROM. A sixth area, in-depth security training, is also necessary if a written security plan is required according to Section 172 of the Code of Federal Regulation. This video training course, the Hazardous Materials Transportation course, has been designed with practical exercises so that you may acquire the skills and knowledge you need to comply with the transportation regulations. As we go through this course, the visual on your screen will show the main idea that will be explained. At key points, you will be instructed to stop the video so that you may take one of the tests in your student manual. With that, let's get started with Lesson 1, General Awareness Training. In Lesson 1, we will be covering general awareness topics on hazardous materials. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify hazardous material classes and divisions and the associated placards. Locate the proper shipping name in the hazardous materials table. Locate the listed identification number for the proper shipping name. Locate the listed hazard class or division for a given proper shipping name. Locate the appropriate packing group or PG. Locate the listed required label or labels. Determine and cite the HMR references for the special provisions for and correct packaging of hazardous materials. Determine modal restrictions, if any. Let's start with the HM classes and divisions. There are nine classes of hazardous materials, each with divisions that further identify the HM. Class 1 covers explosives that are identified by orange placards. Within Class 1, there are six divisions. Class 1, Division 1, covers explosives with mass destruction potential. Class 1, Division 2, or 1.2, denotes projectile explosives. Class 1.3 covers materials with a primary fire hazard. Class 1.4, denotes explosives that have no significant blast hazard. 1.5 is for very insensitive explosives, such as blasting caps. And finally, Class 1, Division 6, denotes extremely insensitive detonating substances. Class 2 covers essentially gases. Class 2, Division 1, covers flammable gases, such as propane. Class 2.2, covers non-flammable compressed gases. These types of gases are shipped with the green non-flammable gas label and placard. Class 2.3 covers gases that are poisonous by inhalation, which are identified by a black and white label and placard with a skull and crossbones at the top. Note the term toxic gas instead of poisonous gas is used by other countries and should be considered the same as poisonous gas. Class 3 covers flammable and combustible liquids, such as gasoline, diesel fuel, 
and fuel oils. Class 4.1 covers flammable solids such as matches. 4.2 covers spontaneously combustible materials like charcoal briquettes. 4.3 covers materials that are dangerous when wet. Class 5, Division 1, covers oxidizers. 5.2 covers organic peroxides. Class 6, Division 1, covers poisonous materials such as liquid pesticides. 6.2 is for infectious materials such as medical waste. Class 7 covers all radioactive material such as uranium. Class 8 include corrosive materials such as acids. Class 9 covers miscellaneous materials. Now these are essentially consumer products which when packed in small quantities do not pose any particular danger. In addition to the nine classes, there are other regulated materials, or ORMs. These are any materials that pose an unreasonable risk to health, safety, and property when transported in commerce and do not meet any of the definitions of the other hazard classes. An ORMD is a consumer commodity which presents a limited hazard during transportation due to its form, quantity, and packaging. ORMD classifications are common for materials that are packaged and distributed in a form intended for retail sales. These are materials for use by individuals for personal care or household use. This term also includes most drugs and medicines. Now that we have an understanding of the hazardous materials classes, let's talk about the hazardous materials table. The table is designed to supply you with all the basic information you need to know for packaging and marking, quantity limitation for mode of transportation, storage requirements, and exemptions. The hazardous materials table we are referencing is found in your hazardous materials compliance guidebook. This compliance guidebook is the trucking industry's primary source of information for hazardous materials compliance. There are seven columns. For easy reference, materials are listed alphabetically by proper shipping name. Let's start with column one. Column one has six symbols, a plus sign, and capital letters, A, D, G, I, and W. The plus sign indicates that the proper shipping name, hazard class, and packing group must be used regardless of any mixtures of solutions of that material. An A stands for air transportation. A D indicates commodities for domestic transportation. A G indicates that the technical name or names must be entered in parentheses in association with the basic description. An I indicates international transportation and a W signifies water transportation. Column two lists the proper shipping name and description. Column three contains the designation of the hazard class and division. Column four lists the identification number assigned to each proper shipping name. Those numbers preceded by the letters UN are considered proper shipping names and considered appropriate for international transportation as well as domestic transportation. Those preceded by the letters NA are considered proper shipping names, considered appropriate for transportation to and from the United States and Canada. Column five denotes the packing group assigned to the material. Some materials are assigned to more than one package groups, in which case the shipper must determine the correct packaging group for the hazardous materials. Packaging groups are determined according to the relative degree of danger presented by each hazardous material or HM. That is, packing group one means great danger. Packing group two means moderate or medium danger. And packing group three means minor danger. Note that gases do not have packing groups. Column six of the HMT specifies the hazard warning labels required to be applied to each package of hazardous material unless accepted. Column seven specifies codes for special provisions applicable to packaging, packaging requirements, certification, marking, or labeling for hazardous materials. 
Now, these special provisions are in addition to the standard packaging requirements. Packages must conform to the special provision limitations or additional regulations. Special provisions are coded with numbers and or letters. These special provision codes are found in the back of your compliance guidebook. A numbers only code means multimodal in application and may apply to bulk and non-bulk packages. A code containing a letter refers to a special provision which applies only to that specific mode of transportation. They are as follows. An A code applies only to materials to be transported by air. B, for bulk packaging, the letters IB or IP refer to a special provision that applies only to transportation in IBCs or intermediate bulk containers. N, for non-bulk packaging, R for rail transportation, T for intermodal portable tanks, TP for a special portable tank provision, and W for transportation by water. Now that we've seen the elements that make up the hazmat table, let's see how to use it. Identifying materials using the hazardous materials table is a four-step process. Step one is to classify the material Step two is to determine the symbol. Step three is to determine the label. And step four is to determine the package. Step one is a four-part process. First, you should determine the proper shipping name and description in column two. Second, you should determine its class or division in column three. Third, you should determine its identification number in column four. And finally, you should identify the materials packaging group. In step two, you identify the material symbol as specified in column one. Remember, a plus symbol fixes the proper shipping, hazard, and packaging group for that entry. A D identifies proper shipping names, which are appropriate for domestic transportation. And an I identifies proper shipping names appropriate for international shipping. For step three, determining packaging is a three-part process. Part one is to determine packaging group in column five. Second, check for special provisions in column seven. And finally, check for packaging authorization requirements in column eight. Remember, it is the shipper's responsibility to ensure compliance with proper packaging. And finally, for step four, determine the proper labeling from column six. Now let's run through some examples that depict the particular requirements found in the hazardous materials table for specific material. Our first example is combustible liquid NOS, or not otherwise specified. Following the four-step process, we have first identified the proper shipping name in column two. Moving to the right, we find in column three that it is classified as a combustible liquid and column four lists the identification number as NA1993. In step two, we refer to column one to determine the material symbol. We see that the material's designation is a D, which identifies this material's proper shipping name, and it is only used for domestic transportation. Column one also displays a G, which indicates that the technical name must be entered in parentheses in association with the basic description. In step three, we see that this material is going to travel under package group three, as listed in column five, and that specific provisions are listed as IB3, T1, T4, and TP1. In packaging authorizations found in column eight, this material requires a combustible placard. Finally, in step four, we determine that there is no specific labeling requirement listed in column six. Our next example is compounds cleaning liquid. Again, using the four-step process, we see that this material has a hazardous class of eight and falls into package group one. It has a North American identification number of NA1760, its symbols are D, which designate this material's proper shipping name is appropriate only for domestic transportation, 
and G, which indicates that the technical name must accompany the basic description. The material requires a corrosive label and corrosive placard, and column 7 indicates that there are many special provisions. Well, that's it for lesson 1. Stop the video and take test 1 in your student guide.